Welcome back everybody. Today we are talking about this guy, the Leica SL. So this has been a particularly interesting camera and the timing of this review was also very interesting because Leica actually were nice enough to send this to me to share with you guys. And at the time when they sent it to me, I did a little preview video and I mentioned that there were some upcoming announcements from Panasonic at Photokina and they have since been announced. And so now we have a partnership between Leica as well as Panasonic and Sigma now. And this is the mount they're gonna be using. And so this is now the L mount, and you're going to see two new cameras from Panasonic and then lenses from Panasonic, Sigma, and I'm assuming Leica as well. So it's interesting because this is not exactly a new camera. It's been out for a few years. I was really honored to have the opportunity to get to use this a little bit and share my experience with you guys. But I was kind of thinking, you know, this is interesting that they would send this to me now, but since that news came out, I think this really becomes quite an interesting Interesting camera. We're only going to be talking about the Leica SL today and the 24 to 90 millimeter lens that they sent because that's what I've actually shot on. My experience has been really good with this camera. Uh, I've really been impressed with the image quality. The other thing that is particularly impressive about this camera is just the physical layout, the ergonomics of how you use the camera and the design. It really is beautiful and it's got this wonderful Bauhaus inspired thing that Leica do so well. So first let's dive down and talk about how this camera works. It's very minimal and very cool. So looking at the top of the SL, you're going to notice that this is a very minimal layout. Now moving left to right, on the far left there is a metal box that seems to stick up out of the body. That's actually the GPS. This camera has GPS built in. Assuming that you're in an area that supports GPS, this camera will tag your images. It's a really nice feature to have and it's very handy because it's something you don't have to do later if you use geotagging to search your images. On the right hand side of the camera we have a top LCD screen and then there's just three buttons and a dial. We have the shutter button on the front, the video record button on the back, the one next to it is a live view button and then we have a command dial on the top of the camera. I'm going to come back around to how this works in a minute. The back of the camera is extremely minimal as well. We have an on and off switch. The LCD is surrounded by four buttons. We'll talk about how those work when we get into the menus. You have a thumb knob joystick and on the right hand side of the camera is a rear command dial that also presses. So this is basically how this camera works and how you're going to dial into various things. The so Leica SL uses the standard program, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual modes. To switch these modes, what you're going to do is with your thumb is press in on the rear command dial and then you can select what mode you want to be in. Now let's say I'm in aperture priority mode for instance, once I select that, now the top dial controls the over or under exposure settings, depending on if you want to compensate your exposure. And then the rear dial actually dials in the aperture. And this works the same way for shutter speed priority as well. When I go into that, now we're going to change the shutter speed with the back dial and exposure compensation on the top. And when you go over to manual mode, the rear dial becomes aperture and the top dial becomes shutter speed. It's really simple to use. In your basic configuration, if you're using either the rear screen or looking through the viewfinder, you're going to see all the AF points and if you use the joystick, you can toggle the selection around which point you want to be in. And then what I love is that you can either press in on the joystick to dial in that particular autofocus setting, or you can have press the shutter. The screen is touch sensitive as well, so you can also select your focus point that way. In this basic configuration, the SL is really easy to use, and that's one of the things that I love about it. And one of the things that I love that Leica have done so well with this design is it's minimal. And one of the problems that you have with a lot of modern cameras, especially when you move in to mirrorless is we have lots of options in terms of technology and sometimes the interface and just the layout of the camera can get very confusing. And what I like about this is generally you're going to have it set up for one specific type of thing while you're addressing the subject you're photographing. This allows you to do it and it also allows the camera to become pretty transparent and the photographer and the image just kind of blend in and you're able to actually concentrate on what it is that you're trying to photograph. So major props to Leica for a very minimal design. So when you want to go into the menu system to change the way the camera is set up. I really love that Leica has taken another minimal design approach to this as well. And as I mentioned earlier, you have your rear screen and there are four buttons that surround that screen. And so basically all of your options are going to be controlled by using these four buttons. When you just press any one of them, you're going to see a series of four icons that come up that tell you basically what each one of them does. So on the top left, for instance, you have your camera settings. On the bottom left, you have a crop feature. So if you're using manual focus and you want to zoom in, 
again for critical focus, you can do that. On the top right, you have your playback. And on the bottom right, you have basically a button that will scroll through all the various views that you have with the viewfinder and the rear LCD as well. So depending on what information you want to have on your heads up display, that's what scrolls through that. Now here's the cool thing is each one of these four buttons will kind of change depending on what setting you're in. And I know that sounds confusing, but it's actually very intuitive and it's actually very easy to use. Everything's well laid out and labeled. So for instance, if I'm in the camera settings, the default is I basically can select any setting that I want for the camera. So for instance, drive mode, focus mode, so on and so forth. On the bottom right, or sorry, the bottom left, you have image settings. On the bottom right, you have camera setup settings. And on the top right, you have a favorites list. So if you want to assign things over to a favorites menu to get to really quickly. What I love about this is it keeps you from having to scroll through things. And no matter what you're in, if you're in the playback mode, for instance, um, again, everything is very well laid out. And so when things, like one of the things that gets very difficult with a lot of cameras now is there's a lot of scrolling and a lot of sub menus and Leica have done a wonderful job of keeping that to a minimum. And this is a really nice system and it's really super intuitive and I've really loved using this. So I want to talk a little bit about the lens that Leica sent me to use with the SL. Now typically when you think of Leica lenses, you don't think of zoom lenses, you think of rangefinder prime lenses. They're very well known for that. Those are some of the best lenses ever made. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. And this is the 24 to 90 millimeter f2.8 on the wide end and it goes to f4 as you go out towards 90 millimeters. And I have to say, I was really impressed. This is one of the best and most versatile zoom lenses I think I've ever used. It is just unbelievably good in terms of image quality. Now, typically a normal zoom lens like this is going to be like a 24 to 70 or sometimes they go longer, like you'll have a 24 to 105, but it'll be an F4 straight across the board. I really like this focal range. This is a 24 to 90, so it goes into portrait territory. And I wasn't sure really how that was going to look in terms of portraits, because as you go towards 90, F4 isn't the widest aperture in the world, but you still get a considerably beautiful depth of field. And it's not going to be as razor thin as something like a, like a Noctiluck or something like that where it's an f9.5 but the out of focus rendering on Leica lenses is so gorgeous and the contrast everything about it is just so beautiful looking I was really impressed with this now the one thing I will say about this lens is it is clearly a studio lens it is heavy there are 18 elements in 15 groups there are four aspherical elements in here so it's extremely well designed but when you combine that with the weight of the camera it is not really a street camera it is heavy now one thing that is very cool about the SL is that you can use adapters like it makes them so you can use all of the M mount rangefinder lenses with the SL that would considerably lighten this up and make it much more of a street camera now you won't have autofocus on those lenses because they're manual focus only but it does start to make you realize that like I have a system in mind for what they're doing another concern I had with this lens is how well it was going to perform in low light and there's a couple factors that actually make it perform pretty well first of all the SL does really well at higher ISO settings and so 1600 and even 3200 are very usable. It also has built-in optical image stabilization which helps and I actually think that the weight of this camera and the solid feel keeps it more steady in your hand and I really didn't have too much trouble shooting in low light at all. Technically speaking, Leica cameras have always been quote unquote mirrorless. That's what a rangefinder is. It does not use a reflex mirror. But as I've said many times on this show, what we're seeing with mirrorless right now, it's way more than just having a camera without a mirror in it. It's about a data stream that you're able to pull off of the sensor and view in real time. And it's really interesting to see what Leica has given us in terms of that. And I think clearly now when we take into consideration the announcements that were made at Photokina with the partnership between Panasonic Sigma and now Leica, that this is a system camera that they're looking at and it's going to revolve around this mount. And I think that's where it opens up some particularly interesting possibilities. So for instance, I think it's fairly obvious that Leica cameras and lenses are an investment. Getting into that system is not something you do casually because they are expensive. And so for Leica, who has always had this incredible rangefinder approach to what they've done with cameras, to go into a mirrorless system, it's got Got to be something that's going to have that versatility to it. Now I think that already they sort of are going in that direction but now with the announcement of the three-way partnership with Sigma and Panasonic I think you're going to see more options not only in terms of camera bodies but also in terms of lenses at different price points and it's going to be really interesting to see what comes of that. 
So let's talk about video for a second. Now, typically you don't associate Leica with video. In fact, I think it's been something they've largely avoided on their cameras. Many cameras in the M series, for instance, don't even offer video as an option. The Leica SL does. In fact, we're filming on that right now. And I have to say that it was one of the most impressive things about this camera. So I'm going to compare Leica and Panasonic for just a second. And the only reason I'm doing that is because both these companies are now in a partnership where they are developing cameras and lenses for this mount. Having said that, what's interesting is that the Panasonic cameras like the GH5 and the GH5S, in fact the rest of this video was all filmed with the GH5, they offer features that make them actually professional video cameras in a mirrorless format. In fact, I think they're one of the leaders in that area. They offer things that many other camera companies just don't. They really are set up to be video cameras. Now having said that, what's interesting is Leica is much more bare bones. However, the image quality is excellent as you can see. And also the autofocus, which I'm using right now, tends to work a lot better than what Panasonic does with the DFD technology or the depth by defocus. Depth by defocus works wonderfully for stills, but when you use it in video, it tends to hunt and seek a little bit. It's gotten better with firmware updates, but it's just still not there. Now what's interesting is both cameras are contrast-based autofocus detection and the Leica just does a much better job. Now, having said that, there are many features that you don't have on the Leica. For instance, you don't have a flip around screen. There is a ser pretty serious crop in 4K. In fact, I've had to move this camera way back, which is why my framing changed. But having said that, the image quality is incredible, and I think there's a lot of capabilities and a lot of possibilities that Leica could work with with their mirrorless system. And I would really love to see something like an SL2 come out that would offer some of that and be a really serious contender a video camera. I think Leica, with the lenses that they offer and the image quality that you get, I think it would be a big game changer for them. The Leica SL does not have IAF, but it does have facial recognition autofocus. It's one of the drive modes, and that's what I'm using right now. And with this lens being f2.8 on the wide end and f4 on the long end, you're going to have a deep enough depth of field to where, as long as it's not hunting and seeking, you're going to get everything in focus, and it's really pretty impressive. The other thing is Leica gives you a log profile with this camera. I'm shooting right now using the L-Log profile. Uh, Panasonic has something similar with V-Log, of course. Of course, Sony has S-Log. There's many types of log profiles. And essentially, what they do is they're going to require grading, but they shoot a flat picture. So if you need to go in and post and have more control over recovering shadow detail in a high contrast situation, for instance, a log profile will allow you to do that. I will say this. I do like the L-Log profile. When you grade it, it's actually very easy to grade. You just adjust your contrast, give it a little bit of saturation. You have a lot of control over your colors. So I'm going to wrap this video up shooting on the Leica SL. And I really have enjoyed using this camera. It has some shortcomings in that it's extremely heavy. It's more of a studio camera than it is kind of a street photography camera, which is kind of odd because Leica's kind of known for those kinds of things. Having said that though, this is Leica's foray into full frame mirrorless, and I think it is an excellent start. The SL is a really capable camera, and I really would love to see that developed into an SL2 with some additional things added, perhaps IAF, maybe even phase detection autofocus, and there's some other little things here and there, but it, it was an excellent start and the image quality is what you're getting into with a Leica system. And as you guys can see with the sample images and even with this video that I'm filming, it delivers on all sides. I mean, it really is incredible when it comes to image quality. These lenses are incredible, but I really like the possibilities that open up to Leica with doing a mirrorless camera. Now, technically, rangefinders are mirrorless, but as I've talked about in a lot of videos now, there's a lot more to mirrorless technology other than just not having a mirror in the camera. It involves having a constant data readout from the sensor at all times, which can impact things like autofocus, it can impact video, and I think Leica have made a really good start with this. Anyway, I want to thank Leica for loaning me this camera for a few weeks. It's been an absolute pleasure to shoot on, and I'm really sad to have to be returning it, actually. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please drop a comment below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.